you learn to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Because you cannot manifest until you are a man first. Yes, you cannot manifest until you are a man first. The Bible says that the earnest expectation of creatures are waiting for the manifestation of men, of sons, not of children. The book of Isaiah, the Bible said, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. You don't born sons, you give. Sons are gifts. Children are born. Sons are gifts. They are given. Children are born. Sons are grown. They are gifts. They are gifts. Every son can come as a child. But he's not permitted to stay as a child. Sons are grown out of children. Sons are made out of children. But sonship is not possible. Or sonship will not be possible until the elements that make up child, that makes up the child is taken away. There's nothing wrong with starting as a child. Yes. Mm. Of course, when a believer gets saved, he's first a child. That's why you're called a child of God. I'm not a child of God. I'm a son of God. There's a difference between a child of God and a son of God. Big difference. Big difference. So I'm a son of God. But I was one time a child of God. I wasn't like this before. No, I wasn't. I had to do away with childish things to become this. It's not something you do unconsciously. It's something that must be done consciously. Look, can I say something to you? There's a man trapped inside of you that you have not yet discovered. There's a woman on your inside. The day you find it out, girlishness will die. Bomb boy will die. You have not been able to come to that point though, of manifestation. Why? Because there's this thing holding the man holding inside of you. That child's element, that childish element. That childish factor. There is this Igbo age, my father used to tell me. He said, when a man, when a child washes his hand well, what does he do? He is the elders. He is with the elders. He is with kings. When I was in school, in university, I was really living like a vice chancellor. I wasn't doing what my colleagues were doing. I didn't see myself as a student. I was really living like um, a governor. Talking like a governor, talking like um, a king. That's why all through my schooling days, I didn't associate with anybody who was in my level. Everybody I was associating with was above me. Even up to now, all my friends, there's no one that is in my age bracket. All of them are older than me, far, far older than me. All my friends, archbishops, men who of substance, men of might. No one is in my age bracket. I don't know one who is in my age bracket. All of them are older than me. I don't know why. Everybody I've ever related with older than me. I don't know why. I don't know why. No one had. I don't know why. But I found out that that is what has grown me. Because you become like the company around you. 
you reflect the traits of the company you keep. So right from time, I found that, that people can hardly tell. Okay, look at Jesus. 12 years old guy. But he was dining with professors of his time. At the age of 12. If you go to Lagos Business School now, for instance, and you sit down in the same class or conference room with Mike Adenuga, Dangote, Jimo, and the rest of them, the Adetolas and all of those guys, those big shots in the world of business. If you sit there, won't they see a boy in their presence? Or will they see a man? Do you know I don't need to have 10 million in the account? There are places I go to and I sit down there. They'll be asking me, sir, please, um, there's this investment what 100 million want to do. When I saw you, I felt I should talk to you about it because you're the kind of person we are looking for. There's no one naira anywhere in the account. But because of my disposition, because of the way I carry myself, you see the man in me, not the boy. Age-wise, he can be a boy. Stage-wise, he's in the class of the Dangotes. You will not be able to pastor people until you become a man. Go and mark this thing. Go and mark it. Go and mark it. You will not be able to lead people until you are ahead of them. Leadership is not a position. Pastoring has nothing to do with the position. Or it has nothing to do with the office. It has a lot to do with you, you, with you, with you, with you. Your level of growth. If you are still in the class of the people, you are a goner. Not a national fan, no. You are a goner. Who on to you if you are in a place of kingship and you still behave like a child? Every other person in church. <laughs> and you too, you follow them. Pastor. Come to the office, your staff, you are eating up. You you join there. Give me one, uh, give me one up. You are. If you don't have that differentiating factor, whenever you step into a place, they know pastor has come. A man has just appeared. If you don't have it, you are a, you are a finished pastor. You won't compare followership. They talk like children. You see, follow and talk like children. They sit down to gossip. You follow them too. I've seen a couple of things or in ministry. I think there was one time we finished one leadership breakfast or something. And somebody who is in the pastoring team, children in church, where I'm not, I don't mean children in children's class or children's church. I mean children in congregation, the adults, adult children, hmm? were somewhere eating rice and pap or beans and pap. <laughs> I've not eaten since morning. Him too, he staggered. Went and found school from the office. <laughs> it was so cool. Let me follow you. And he was eating. With them, you are finished. Have you wondered why is that when you go to special occasions, you see all those big men on the high table? They don't eat. You finish the occasion. They prefer to take it, at, take it back home. Have you gone for a big occasion? You saw governor on the high table. <laughs> nah, man. And he's tearing the chicken. And drinking the wine. That's a fool. Didn't that happen? King Sheep has a lifestyle. Pastoring is a call to kingship. Leadership is a call to kingship. You cannot do everything. You can't do what others. The Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Others can do it and get away with it, but not you. Others can dress anyhow and get away with it, not you again. Because leadership is a call to model people. When you take on leadership position or a leadership function, understand you are not there for yourself. You're not there to do what you want. You're there to model people's life. 
That's where discipline comes in. There are two courses I'll take you on tonight. I'm going to finish this one. You're going to go on a light break. After that break, we'll come back. I'll finish the rest. I want to help you guys because, you know, some of you think, hey, the reason why pastor is the way pastor is, he talks the way he talks, he dresses the way he dresses, he reasons the way he reasons, is because he's pastor. After it, he's his chair, not the biggest chair in church. That's the truth. Do you know if I were not the senior pastor here? This is how I would still be. This is me. This is me. If you have bankers in your church, senators in your church, downgotes in your church, what kind of a person will you be? If you were ever going to pastor men like that, start becoming it now. I think you guys are lost in this service. If you're ever going to pastor the highs and mighties, oh God, what kind of person will you be? Excuse her. What kind of job will you do on yourself? There's a woman who is pastoring the governor in this part of the world. Not just governor, members of the government house, She's just, she's not up to, I don't think she's up to 40. 40. What substance does she carry? Okay, check her protocol team. It's men who are in her protocol. She has men in her church, local government chairmen, commissioners, men coming, all that. People who work in the federal parastatal. And they come to her church and sit down. And she can boldly lay hands on them and pray for them. Can lay hands on the governor. What does she carry? Get it all. What does she carry that makes those men submit? Do you know what makes them submit under your leadership? Is that they see you ahead of them. When they look at you and see you guys are at the same level, you are rubbing shoulder to shoulder. You talk the same way they talk. You act the same. Then there's nothing to look up to. When people cannot find something to look up to in you as a pastor or as a leader, if you're going to pastor millionaires. You're going to pass to CEOs of multi-billion corporations. What kind of a person would you need to become? If you have seen that future, what will you be doing now to become it? So what are those things that make up a child? Let's, 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 let's look at, it, at them very quickly. There are about seven of them I'm going to show you quickly and I'll close this session. What is one of the things that defines a child? Number one. I'll show you about those seven characteristics of children who are related to pastoring or leadership. Number one, love for food. Love for food. Children love food. And their life revolves around it. They love food. The truth is that anything a child sees, he thinks it's food. Hmm? He likes food. He wakes up in the morning. The first thing in his mind is food. He thinks food, not work. He has no business with work. If you like daddy be preparing for work, mommy preparing for work, you have to, you have to give me food. Have you seen a child in kindergarten school going to school with just his books without lunchbox? Then, baby, where's your lunchbox? So I'm a man, I'm not a child. <laughs> hmm? I run school, I understand what I'm talking. In our school, one time, in the 
pre nursery class, discovered children don't come to school with books. They don't come to school with writing materials. They don't come to school with anything. You know how they come to school with lunchbox. They must bring lunchbox to school. Why? Children love food. And the truth is that they love food to a point that everything you put in their hand they think is food. So put pen in their hand now. The next place it goes to mouth. Put remote control. It goes to the mouth. Give them paper. It goes to the mouth. Give them. Have you seen the mother? Junior, don't put that money in your mouth. Drops it. The next minute it goes back. They love food. A leader who values food over his personal development is a child. You know, there are leaders who spend money buying crunches, spend money buying video games. I've seen pastors like they spend money buying rubbish, they will not spend money on tapes. Give a child five naira now or ten naira. The first place he runs to is cheese balls. He's not looking for any book to go and buy. The first place he runs to shopping is cheese balls. Why? Because he thinks money is an instrument for buying food. Biscuits, that's what crosses his mind. Just give him, you don't need to tell him what to do with it. He does he won't save it. Just put 200 in his hand now. Thank you. The next minute he has gone for mucus. He has gone for cheese boss. He has gone for tom tom. It's nothing else he's thinking about food. Should I show you from the scripture that this is not just peculiar to children by natural whatever. It's peculiar to leaders. Go to the book of Exodus chapter 10. 10, 10 verse 16. Look at what the pronouncement is. Look at it. Verse 16. Woe to you, O land, whose king is a child, and whose princes feast in the morning. It's a woe to that nation whose king is a child, and their princes feast in the morning. That's what we are seeing in our political leadership today. When you put the governor, put the senator in office, they throw party. Why? Because they think winning election is a call to come and eat money. You give them money that is meant for community development. They siphon it to their account because they think it's money for their belly. They see power as a means to enrich themselves, as a means to eat. I was with a deputy provost of the College of Education today. We were talking. You know, he was telling me, he said, eh, there's been trouble, heat everywhere. People have been writing a number of petitions against the management. He said, since June up till now, we have been getting calls from the government house. They are calling us every time, one question to the other, and we have not done anything wrong. He said, what surprised him, even his friend. He had to call these guys who are writing this petition. He said, what have we done to you guys? What is the problem? Let us resolve. Guess what their response was? He said, eh, there's nothing really. The point is that when I don't stay here too much, you guys have chopped enough. You people should leave. Let other people come and chop. That's the mindset people have about kingship. People have about leadership. It is a tool for amassing wealth. It's a tool. Chop. So the guy is a big ogre because he has to chop. That's what has kept our nation as a third world nation. And that's what is revolving in the church. Pastors think the reason why they have to get into ministry is so they can drive good cars. So they can eat good food. So they can wear good clothes. That's not the essence of ministry, my friend. That's not the all those things will come. They are just the benefits of ministry. They are not the essence of ministry. They are not the reason for ministry. They are only the benefits of ministry. 
So a lot of people carry the essence and put behind and carry the benefits and put in front. That's why they pursue after the benefits and some don't get it. And some can do anything to get that benefit. They can bury charm at the altar to get it. They can tell a lot of big lies to get it. When your priority as a pastor centers around food, you are a devil. Centers around what to eat. You need, you need laying of hands. Then you don't, you, it means you don't yet understand why you are in ministry. When your value for food is more than your value for books, you are a child. When your value for food is more than your value for the world, you are a child. Because that was what killed Adam. Full grown in age. I couldn't resist the sight of food. Can you see how I'm dead to food? I just came back from hungry. I was driving when I went to pick her, coming to church. She kept, what, what are you eating? Let's find somewhere I eat. I said, leave that food thing. I just drove to the office, just laid down to rest. I was feeling hungry. But there were other things preoccupying me. And that minute, if you are with me, you think I hate you. I think I have a problem with you. I don't have a problem with you. There's something I'm, something I'm more concerned about. How do we preach this gospel with style? How do we evade this? Look at the whole of this city. God, go. There's nobody doing ministry there. How can I get Elijah to see how he can take that nation? How can I get these guys to see what I'm seeing? How can I get these guys to begin to put their minds and their eyes on things that are that they above and stop seeing things that chickens are seeing here? Eagles don't see what chickens see. There are things when you start, you will lose appetite for food. There are things as a pastor when you have seen as a leader, you lose appetite for sleep. Appetite for food goes. Somebody saw me. The text is seen my house this night. I got up and I saw it in the office. The person, hey, Pastor, you look so worn out and stressed. Are you resting at all? Have you eaten? My daughter in the choir. She saw me. I stopped, wind down the car. She was like, a, Good evening, Pastor. I said, Okay, are you guys all your eyes? I said, Yes, you're going home. Yes, good night. I didn't know she was taking note of me. She said, Pastor, you look better than this. You're worn out. You're slim. Look at your face. I say, you won't understand. It's what I'm seeing. And I know sometimes food, the appetite goes. Appetite for sleep, it goes. Some of so there's nothing driving you. Your destiny has been sacrificed on an altar of, of porridge. Look at the whole big vision God gave Adam. The whole big garden God gave What took it away? Food. One apple. The first place the devil tempts you in ministry is your, your belly, your belly. Some people now, if we declare fast, seven days fast, they won't come. I said the first place the devil tempts you is your belly, your be- because that is where the thing stops you. That's your belly is the channel where the devil takes advantage of to stop you from fulfilling destiny. He says, no, you're wondering, food? How come food? Jesus, food. How come? How come food? Check people who have problem with laziness. Problem with their mindset is directed towards food. They can't skip a meal. You see those ones who are so focused at food. They eat to a point where, you know, food can lazy you. Can make you a lazy. They eat to a point where you know all their minds, everything has been preoccupied with food. There's no space to think again. When you have eaten and you are satisfied, what next do you need? What else do you need? What else? What, what else are you hungry for? There's a state 
I won't mention the state because this is going on, on record before the governor sends for me. All that. But you go to that state, they actually, they, they owe food though in this nation. But you go to that state, the state looks so impoverished. No development. They own food. I found out the secret why. The people like food. They eat food. They like pigs. They like meat. Anything edible, leave it for them. I say a nation that produces food. Yet yeah, the food can make them rich. Why they consume so much? You see Nigeria. Why Nigeria is a third world nation? Why? Consumer nation. What are we producing? Not check nations that are that consumer nations. They are the ones that are poor. They have so much of resources, oh, but they consume too much. In fact, they export it and buy it again. Because they consume. So what they sold to you, they come back to you and buy it from you so they can keep consuming. You don't have all the days to process it. They give it to you, process our tomatoes, buy it again, no problems. They consume. And it took a whole garden out of a man. Just one apple. A whole garden. Why? Pass. That was the same temptation the devil brought to Jesus. If you know you are the son of God. Remember, he didn't tell him if you know you are the child of God. The devil was always there. He said, if you know you are the son of God, he created that consciousness in Jesus' mind. I'm a son, I'm not a boy. If you know you are the son, what was the devil trying to test? Sonship. Are you a son or an Adam, a boy? And Jesus replied immediately. He was hungry. The Bible said after 40 days and and 40 days, he was actually hungry. And the devil showed up and said, it was at the point where where, where the devil knew this guy is not hungry. That was when he came. It wasn't when the anointing has increased. When he was hungry. So the first place the devil tempts you usually is in your belly. He comes. If you know you're the son of God, turn this stone to bread. And Jesus looked at him. The same thing you made Adam do that cost him his downfall. I am not the boy Adam. I am a man who shall not live by bread alone. The man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word. By every word. That proceeds out of the mouth of God. By every knowledge. By every wisdom. By every study. By every devotion. By every training. Okay, look at Esau. What is porridge compared to birthright? I'm going to talk to you some other time about the mystery of food. The mystery of food. So you understand what food is doing to a lot of people. I want to ask you a question. Why is it that in this country or in some part of the world, you have more eateries than libraries? I want to ask you, please. You don't understand what the devil is doing. You see food. You see food. Hey. Leaders need to eat, oh, but the way they eat is not the way children eat. Leaders eat for strength. I don't live to eat, I eat to live. That's the reason I eat. I don't live to eat. I eat to live. And I don't eat for pleasure. I eat for strength. If you want to overcome in leadership, overcome food. Because that's where laziness begins. So sometimes people tell, Pastor, you don't like food. Hey, you don't eat food. What is going on? I say, you don't understand it. Think, I am killing something. Sometimes I, they take me out to crunches or some places. And I sit down there. And you're wondering. Sometimes you want to buy, buy, buy. I keep telling you, stop buying these things. And there are times all these things will lie looking at me or I won't touch it. You bring wines. They, they brought me several wines to the office recently. There was no one I opened. Did you see me open any wine in the office? I gave them all out. There was not one I opened. You will drink it if it's you. Shay. They bring things. I Sometimes I forget food. It stays there. Boys. Sometimes they cook for me in the house. I come. Just come. Take my bath. Get away. You come back and find that food spot. And you just end up throwing it away. What was that thing that Esau? 
What, what, what was that thing about Esau? That made him sell a whole birthright for food. Plate of porridge. There was not even yam inside. Not porridge yam. Just porridge. Just porridge. No yam inside. Porridge. I would have said, okay, at least let's, it was worth it somehow. Just porridge. Stew. Jacob gave you the porridge and kept the yam inside. He didn't give you yam. Maybe there was no fish inside. Just porridge. And you gave away destiny. They are busy building you people. Look at restaurants. And they make restaurants look so cute. They make the eateries look so crunches. Look at their name. KFC. They are giving you shop rights. Then you go to one portion of shop rights. The whole place is food. There's KFC. There's crunches. There's mac bites. There's feed well. Eat well. Stomach care. For one person, all this food staring at you. And you see the way they decorate it. Chickens, you know, I went to buy ice cream in shop, right? You need to see the way the guy played ball with the team. You, the way they mix it, all kinds of flavors now. And you see people trooping their destinies have been slaughtered on, on ovens now. Destinies have been slaughtered because of food. People are killing their destiny. They eat and forget themselves. Because when you are finished eating, the next thing is, uh, what else? Woe to that nation whose child or whose king is a child. And their princes feast in the morning. You know why I use the word morning? Morning time is a time for tilling the ground. Morning is a time for work. Jesus said, I must do the work of he that has sent me now that it is day. For night cometh when no man shall walk. That night is not talking about this one. This is not this night. Every man has four or three most important phases of his life. You have the morning of your life. It's between age zero to I think 30. See, I don't know. That's the morning. Then your afternoon starts from 40. I think to about 60 or 70 or so. 60. No, 70. Then your night starts from 70 down. So Jesus was still in his morning. And let me tell you, that guy even left in his morning. He didn't wait for night. He finished everything before night. I wish I can get you guys to understand this thing. I must do the work of he that has sent me. Now that it is day, he was in his morning. He died at the age of, he existed at the age of 33. That was his morning time. That's when productivity is high. That early morning, that's when your head, in the night, maybe you just slept in the night, got up, your head is sharp. You go to big companies like Shell's Bank and all that, even when they serve you coffee. Because that time, your hormones are just... Boston. All your hormones, your intelligence hormones, all of that, your creativity hormones, you can think. That's why I don't play with my morning time. People who are calling me, Pastor, I want to go and say, check every appointment I've given people. It starts from afternoon. I don't play with my morning time. That's when I organize my life, organize my day. They want to see me, Pastor, can I see you at... 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, usually it's hard. Except it's something that is very, very urgent, an emergency I can allow. But it's not a nature for me to allow people to see me in the morning. I move it from afternoon. Anything from 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, you can start coming. Then I've already organized it the whole day. You can be with me in the office. You don't know there are things I've set emotions running. You think you're still in my time. No way. Things are running. So Esau could sacrifice that destiny, that destiny for a plate of porridge plate of porridge he gave it up, food okay, what was it about Daniel when they said, give them the best of the king's food he said, I don't need that stuff give me only vegetables and water, what was he trying to show you, I, I am not here for pleasure don't need food for pleasure he only needed vegetable and water so he can keep fit. 
know, sometimes they buy me things. What drink do you want? I say, give me water. Sometimes it takes me time to decide. What do I even eat? What do I eat? Okay, give me a rice there. Leave chicken. I feel chicken is even hard work. All those turkey hard work. Me, what time do I have to be crunching all those bones and all of those stuff? Just put one beef there. I'm okay with that. I don't know how to spend time in a, in a nitri. Just eat and dash out. Now you want to ask a girl out. Eat three. Because food is connected to sex. So you want to sleep with the girl. The first place you get the job done is eat three. Just take the girl to crunches. Hmm? When you are done with the stuff, done with eating and drinking, automatically the girl's heart opens, the guy's heart opens, and the next thing is in that way. You know, food links up to sex. The Bible said Esau was a fornicator. Yeah, we didn't see where he committed one. How? You can trace sex to food. They have the same thing is linked, is interlinked. Any man who cannot control appetite for food, go and check him. He has a high tendency for sex. Start dealing with that food appetite. Gradually start taking care of the other one. Because the appetite for food is the same appetite for the other one. That's why there are a lot of pastors with addiction problems. Same pastors who cannot live life free until they can't do anything until they have masturbated. They can't. You know there are food that stirs your semen. The food you eat now, they work on your semen. You start having excessive semen. Yes, there are food that does it. It starts awakening some hormones in you. Sexual hormones. That's the power of food. I'm not doing a food seminar. What I'm going to take you guys through, you are going to wow food. Why did Daniel say, don't give me? You're going to enslave my destiny by doing that. And after some time, they brought the same Daniel and brought the other guys. Daniel was looking more healthier than them. Deal with this thing called food. Deal with it. Deal with it. Love for food. Pleasure. That's what it is. Pleasure. Pleasure. Anything that gratifies, that makes the body happy. You will like it. You will not be an effective. Let's leave it there. I don't the child. That's why you see, as I as I this family issue thing, my children, my friend, listen, my house, <laughs> my children's room is going to be stocked with food. Sorry, stocked with books and food and toys. Telling you, parents are doing with their children nice, right? Not everything. The devil is very, very. He can be good at being smart sometimes. It's not everything you see parents doing with their children now that is right. My children will not die if I don't take them to amusement park. They won't die. Can take them there twice a year. The rest of the year, sit down there and read. You won't die. Yes, so some of you is alien to you. You are looking at me, pastor. Because you think everything that is popular is proper. Because you went to amusement park and saw children at cross and they are playing. Go and check those children. I'm not saying recreation is good, though, but I will do that recreation when it's needful. I'm not saying all those peer mingling and all that is bad. No, it's not. Don't misquote me. But you have to watch it. Too much of it will kill those children. You buy telly. You come into their room. It's telly everywhere. TV, cartoon. And in your mind, hey, they are living good life. Give those children time. The devil has stolen something from them. You don't know. And parents are the ones killing them the more. Those children will grow up. Oh, Lord, those fools. Children who can't handle issues in life. Those are the ones who grow up. They breastfeed them. They are mothers who have pampered them. They end up with what you call the mother's wound. Over guidance. Over everything. At 
a full grown man. He has graduated from school, gotten a job. At his level, mommy is still calling him. Nah, you know, have you eaten something? Come to the house. Have you eaten? Da, da, da. He's still spoon feeding you. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.